hello, this is Neo, just an average CSGO player, and you're watching Florin's YouTube channel. Right, one thing that's quite interesting about Simple is as long as a player doesn't directly trash talk him and tell him he's bad and activate the toxic bad Simple, you can actually be a very humble person to other star players and other great players. Like, people know you've been very, very kind to people like Fallen and Astralis and SK. The people that beat you, you often always gave credit to them, right? Yeah. Here's what I always wanted to know, is in the time when you were the GOAT, and by the way, I agree. That's why I had the same opinion. At the time, Astralis was winning almost every tournament. And I always used to say... It's a bit messed up that, like, Device does win the MVP of all these tournaments and no one ever says he's the GOAT. And I think even Device says you're the GOAT, right? Even though, look, I understand if we're being objective, like, I would probably pick Simple. But if I was Device, dude, I, if I'm beating you and I'm also doing pretty well, I would be like, hey, yeah, I'm the GOAT. Like you say, I deserve to, I, I did my job. Like, what do you think of Prime Device? He definitely was uh, really, really good. And I was uh, watching so many demos to beat not only him, but Astralis. But I had some issue. I remember when I was uh, just off top, I was playing against Zaibu. I was always watching the Zaibu demos to beat them and prepare for him positions, all of this. But when you preparing for one player, there are four more. <laughs> and sure. four more who actually was destroying me. Like Shocks on Overpass on City, he was destroying my whole team. And... Uh, I feel like uh, I was missing this point when I was preparing. You were too tunnel vision. Well. Yes, because there was Astralis, a whole team that was just insanely good. Yes. And I remember how we played against them on cash when you stay on quad on A side. And one of the guys indoor and the other one coming from city, from car. And I picking from right side and I, I was just waiting. Who's going to pick first? Who's going to pick first? And at the same point when I try to go back to have better their picking at some point. Oh, I was, right. oh that's... That's that's a team play that yes. I want to see in my team as well. But device definitely he's like he was destroyed in many important games and especially many major finals. And uh, if I had chance uh, to do the same four majors, then to be a god, I would definitely choose four majors because the four right. majors is uh, something uh, something much harder to achieve right now. By the way, I have a question for you, which is. In 2017, you were really good. In 2016, you were one of the best. In 2018, you were unbelievable. But you had years and years where you kept being really good. You were always one of the absolute best. Once you've already hit the top level, I know some players, they would just be like, right, cool, I'm the best now. I can chill a bit. Or, you know what? Ah, I've done that. You know, I lost my motivation. How, why just simple? How are you able to just keep grinding, keep the work ethic up? I think because I didn't win anything. <laughs> right. I felt like, uh, like 2016, we won... One event, 2017, we didn't win anything, yep. 2018, three events, 19, one Couple maybe. maybe, yeah, one or two, yeah. Yeah, and I was just, it was so hard to lose, really. It's like all the time I was asking myself, why again, why again, why again? <laughs> Especially in, 20, in 2017, yeah, because it was, I think, the worst year, 2017. Or twenty no twenty nineteen no because but twenty nineteen was a bit strange as well. Yeah, we'll get to that one. Right, here's the yeah. thing. What you're saying there, though, is actually like, in English, you call it like an epiphany. It's where you have like a realization and the moment you have it, it just makes everything else make sense. Like you understand the world in a different way. So what you're talking about with Astralis, this is why I actually do think they're the greatest team ever. Put it this way, there's other teams like, put it this way, maybe like FaZe Clan recently probably had more skill. Like they had the crazy aimers and stuff. But like what you're talking about is actually some of the beauty of Counter-Strike Simple, which is in Counter-Strike, if you actually use your team it, you can beat even the best player like Simple. You can beat a, a more skilled player. This is something I'm sure you were realizing, right? It's not just about, uh, do I pop off? It's like, if as a team, like you're saying, we all understand what we're doing and we all do the same plan, then we will, no one can beat us, right? Yes, of course. And when you have a confidence in teammates and when you see how they preparing, you know, you get even more confidence and uh, you start to even become more friends with them. Because, uh, Either you're a good uh, friend and you're destroying everyone, or either you're good professionals. And sometimes when you mix it, it's uh, right. It's when you create an error. 
because I also did want to ask, obviously, like a, a sizable part. You know, I want to ask about Blade because I've known this guy from a long, 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 long time ago. I remember him in Amazing Gaming when he get, had people like Star X and Mark Love came in. and Ed, I remember all this stuff back then. But if people don't know, before he became the coach of Na'Vi, everyone in the CIS region was flaming um, Blade. They were all like, oh, he is outdated. Like he thinks it's 1.6 still. You know, he, he doesn't understand modern CS. And what I would say is this simple. If people saw when teams like Fnatic were at the peak, Fnatic really does just let the star players do what they want to do and they play a default and then, you know, brilliant Olaf Meister move and a JW put. But that's not like, they didn't write that up on a, you know, it's not a blackboard where they said what they were going to do. So people thought, right, CS is played in CS Go like that. And so people People thought Blade's vision of the game, it's too old school because if people don't know, he's like a military commander. He's like trying to figure out every possible permutation and what will happen with this rotor. He's like, tell me something about, to me, he's like a professor, dude. I think, I think he's actually like one of the greatest minds ever in CS. Yes, that's, uh, he's, he's genius, I think, in CS. And the way, how much time he spent uh, to become better and to create his own meta is like, is insane. And, uh, some people, even right now, there's a lot, much more players in CS, new new people, they don't understand that he wrote uh, players like me, he wrote Electronic, he wrote Flamey. Yes. And all all this was in uh, flip side and uh, that team. And yeah, so as you said, Fnatic had a five-star players who could easily win rounds and Blade grow those players as well. And besides that, he understood how how to manage to get a better team play understanding of game like Astralis had. And that's why he's like one of the legendary, if not legendary, coach in my mind. Like, you know this because you've been there in real life, right? But I like to talk a lot. But if I'm talking to Blade, dude, I'll listen. I, he's going to tell me some shit I might not even know about what he was doing in the game or what his vision was. Like, this is also a guy, if people don't know, he doesn't seem very, like, uh, social on camera and he's not great in English. But if people don't know, this guy could literally talk about CS for 10 hours straight. Like, is he just, it just like, he's just thought about it so deeply, right? Yes, yes. He's, uh, he's really good at it. And he was... Uh... Before he came, he was sport director of Navi. Yes. I remember. And I was remember a talk. Maybe I was telling to him when we had Kane and Zeus, I'm telling him, maybe you should stay with us on bootcamp. You should give some ideas, even if he wasn't in team, you know, so he can give some advices to Edward or Flamey. And he was actually watching all the time. And at some point, Navi decided uh, to bring him as coach. The only thing is, though, that led to what I think was a controversial moment. I actually think made people sort of outside Ukraine question Blade, which was when he you had that 2019 lineup and you still had Zeus, and then even afterwards, they made this decision towards the end of the year. If you remember, the Krieg, that T-side weapon, was really OP. Everyone was amazing with this gun back then. Yeah. And his vision was, because you brought Guardian back in, Simple isn't the opera anymore. He's just going to be the Krieg. And it's like what you were talking about earlier on, which is... In this scenario, what your vision is, and his is, I think, is that, like you say, it can be more versatile. Like, you can make more players. You can you can retake, et cetera, with the Krieg in a way that you wouldn't with an AWP. Like, you might save sometimes with an AWP, right? The problem with this is it just didn't look as good. Like, everyone thought, yeah, but simple on the AWP was better, though. Was was this the right move to try? Uh, it's actually... There was other players, but uh, I remember when Boomage, uh, Flamey, and Electronic... They were so happy. We're gonna add Guardian now. You're gonna play Rifle. It's it was their idea first of all. Right. Was, and I w wasn't sure because I remember the time when I played with Guardian, and how he approached the game and uh, his motivation and all of this, and I wasn't sure. But they were so excited about this, and after they understood it, it it's not gonna work, because the confidence he lost all confidence, and uh, it's actually sad for me for Guardian that he didn't win major. I think he's the one who he never did. the most beside Nika, yeah. I do have a question along those lines, though, is there's a saying in English, and the saying is, the perfect is the enemy of the good. Because sometimes when you try to be perfect, you will already get to a point where this thing I'm doing works, 
but you'll keep trying to fix it even more. You'll try and make it better and better and better and better and better. And so the, I think this was the perception people had of Blade Simple, which is he's trying to play too perfectly. I've actually heard the same thing in the French scene people say about existence. They're trying to be like a chess master and everyone's going to do this perfect move and we're going to dominate the game. But obviously the problem is, I mean, first of all, a lot of Counter-Strike pros are young guys. They're like 18, 19. They don't necessarily have this vision of the game. They're just playing like FPL. Like it feels like it took a while before his vision could actually be in Navi, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, when he became coach, uh, he was trying, uh, he just said, we need half year to create a system. And uh, no, he, he said not half, he said three months. In three months, we're going to win. And after three months, we just start to win. And finally, we start to do a system and we start to add some things from different teams, especially Australians. There is the first one who showed to all esports that you need to wake up earlier, you need to go be a professional uh, yes. breakfast together. Yeah, even if you're going gym together, not only for yourself or your health, right. but you're going with your teammates and you're you can talk about game or whatever you want anytime. And uh, that's what uh, was Blade trying to bring in team outside of the game as well. And I think he did a great job. And uh, the way he he's choosing uh, psychologist as well, the one who is comfortable to work with and analyst as well. <coughs> Just because he understands what those people can bring and how they can make a team play better. Right. So yeah, he's a really nice guy. By the way, one thing I have to ask about before we get to the dominance era of 2021, which is awesome, is I always felt like, I don't know if I'm going to say you're unlucky because the whole world got affected by this, but like when you made that lineup and then you had that kind of eight zero run in 2020 and you dominate everyone and you win kind of eight zero, which is a big accomplishment, like, that's when after that we have to go on the internet for like the next year and a half. Like everyone surely is wondering what I'm wondering. It's like, dude, wouldn't that Navi team have won the major? Uh, yeah, I think uh, we would have a lot of chances to do this. And it was a bit uh, sad because of this COVID. But yeah, some tournaments that we won, like Katowice. And uh, people say that I won everything, but Katowice without Weavers. I feel, I feel like it's a bit it's a bit easier for everyone. Sure. There is no pressure. Yeah. Or, Grand Slam that we won with ESL Pro League being online yeah. when we beat Vitality. It was a bit strange, strange as yeah. well. And, uh, but before that, uh, people should remember that we were winning 2-0 against Vitality in final Vitality and against Australis, and it was online. Yes. And we actually managed to lose this, or we were winning 2-1. And uh, that what made us stronger as well, because that was ah, right. sad losses that uh, we were trying to fix. And I'm glad that uh, after after we got... Oh, I remember Cologne that we won. It was online as well against G2. No, no, it was online, but it was where there was no crowd again. It yeah, was yeah, just yeah, like the yeah. first LAN. But it was like LAN, because it wasn't like a stadium, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah. By the way, oh, does this not bomb yeah. you out, though? Like, in this time period, like, it was like a year and a half before we got real tournaments back again. Does it... Like, if you've been building... Like you say, your whole career was trying to win the major. You're trying to win the biggest one. And there is no major. We're all just playing stupid online yeah. games. And even worse, thinking, every match... <laughs> did this never bomb you out? Like, I, maybe I'll take a break or fuck this shit, you know? No, no. I was just thinking that uh, hopefully we'll be in form when the crowd come back and good land events. And uh, that was what I was only thinking about. Just wanted to keep our atmosphere and to keep the way how we play it till we finally play a real tournament at Lance. And yeah, I was so glad that uh, we won the Stockholm and the Stockholm was really, really good with this crowd and all of this. And even after uh, we went and won two more blasts and uh, Valera had a uh, 100% win, win rate at Lance. Yes, bit that is if people don't know you yeah, first, yeah. yes. When you were um, online and as you were talking about you were battling Astralis and Vitality and this team, these teams often used to beat your Navi squad. I actually do feel though, like you're saying, like it made you even go to a higher level. Because if people remember, this is when you actually changed even your style. Like at this time, the most famous map for this was Nuke. You used to just go wherever you wanted. Like instead of playing one spot, you would like, and if and by the way, you were doing a great job. Like was this actually part of the team's structure? Because I felt like it meant wherever they went on T side, you were always there somehow. I, I was always trying to find entries and we just uh, create something like everyone know when I, for example, go secret or outside or picking from main, everyone know what they need to do. And we were practicing this a lot. Right. And I thought this is a part of uh, success in, th in those rounds. 
and of course uh, the right now it's a bit uh, it changed because right now everyone's playing against each other with gameplay so yeah you cannot just go like this right when bit came into the team if people remember Dude, everyone flamed him the first few tournaments because they were kind of not very good. And in fact, the funny thing was, it was when we went to LAN that he just like went fucking Super Saiyan or something. He was just like, what the hell? Who's this guy? Like suddenly all the lands, he was just playing out of his mind. Can you give me some sense of when he came into the team? Because if people remember, he actually got brought in temporarily, almost like Nevera in Vitality. He just played like one map and then it was like testing and do we bring this guy? <laughs> but eventually he became awesome. So what was the story of this guy becoming a star? And we actually won uh, like second event, I feel. We beat Astralis and uh, he played this Inferno. That was so nice. When he came in team, I, I feel like uh, he just born in this world when he came in team. He just born because he didn't know anything about world. He came not from city, but from, don't want to say village, but outside of city. And uh, he was new and he wasn't confident at all. I remember how he bought... Uh, Hacom? Yes, yes. And he was like, oh, wow, this is... Aircon, he started to do like this oh. during practice, and he's like, "Wow, I never thought it would be so nice." To like he could, make you make him sound like he comes from a farm. Or yes, something. and I'm sitting right next to him, and I'm like thinking, "What the hell?" I mean, that was so funny, and I feel it uh, gave some good mood in our team <laughs> okay. because all of us were trying to teach him something. It was like sure. with kid, but he grew up so fastly, and of course, uh, his mechanical skill is so good, like. His aim is even better than Flamey had and Edward had. And even, I think it's even better than I have. And I actually feel that he can be the level how Nico played in his prime. And, uh, but he just needs to play more and more and to be more confident in himself. And is right it... now, even when we became international, he's, he started uh, to work a lot, like working on English courses with psychologists. I feel like uh, I was doing the same when uh, I was his age. Is it true that in the early days of him being in the team in this dominant Navi, that you and Electronic would also sort of like give him, like essentially get, make calls for him in the rounds? Like he would sort of tell him like, oh, you've gone too aggressive, like pull back now, or yeah, you can push out. Did, did you guys help him in this way? Yeah, yeah, of course. And I think Boomich was saying this as well, because uh, Boomich uh, always knew how he can play. But... Uh, yeah, and Blade was, of course, teaching him. Mo most of the time, we were trying to tell him what to do. And uh, at some point, he grew up and he started to say that I will go here and do some entry or I feel we need to go there, you know. Sometimes uh, players forget that, for example, you're holding A or BST and you just know how the enemy used <coughs> names. And at some point, you need to give this call that Right now, they're not playing like, for example, on Ancient, you're holding A, you know how the guy using in A main, the Smoke and Molotov or Nate, and you know how the guys using Nate's on mid, and you can understand with sound if anyone jumping Donut or with Nate's uh, how many mid, you need to give a call in perfect timing. That's what, uh, that's what uh, most of the players missing, and uh, Bit learned it, and because of that, he, he became more initiative, and it helped us to become much better. One of the things I'm sure for you personally must have been really cool about the dominant 2021 team is, dude, you guys really did sort of play like Astralis. It was really structured. It wasn't just like old teams where simple runs out and just shoots everyone. It was like very slow. I always used to say, I was always very impressed on CT side. How the team would never do like stupid peaks and stuff and would play together and play off angles and stuff. Like it feels like you got to the highest level of any team you've been on, right? Yes, definitely. It was uh, the best roster that I ever had. Like in terms of understanding, uh, as I said, uh, outside of the game as well. It was always fun. <laughs> we had so so many jokes together. Uh, and of course, in terms of achievements. If you remember in Astralis, one of the things, and it became a meme, was that obviously they're really tactical. And then Glaive had that like book he would bring up on camera like... And then and I don't even know if that was a prop or if the real strats were in there. Because I know they obviously did all the scrims. But obviously, you guys had the ultimate version of that in Navi. Like, you actually got dossiers. Like, yes, did yes. that really have all the strats in? Is that really what Navi did? You had an actual, like, playbook of all the things? For example, we have, like, 50 strats on Nuke. And we know what, what strats are in meta right now. Okay. And we just, before game, we had, like, 15 strats, for example. 
so the captain can choose it just uh, he just look and choose but of course all of us need to know roles and there is a roles what to do and uh, we don't need to add all stars because most of the time you have you had when it was mr16 you had like uh, around five six buy rounds yes and at some point you need to do something crazy when you feel it for example like contact a ups three a ups when you know that the guys on mirage fighting for mid a city you just know that nobody's gonna hold you and the guy will leave a or he will throw some flashes from firebox so you just catch him I mean, you know this, but I'm saying it for the benefit of the viewer to ask the question. But that is extremely rare because for most teams, they wouldn't be able to do that. Like I said about before, about people thinking Blade is a perfectionist. Most teams have maybe like seven strats on T-side on a map. And if the game goes to overtime, it's famous. People are out of strats. You've seen everything. This sounds like, it, like look, it sounds like a great idea, but it sounds difficult to implement a system like this. Yeah, and uh, sometimes we even, sometimes you just uh, change the detail. Detail could be smokes outside on nuke. Or detail could be some fake with Molotov on top of hut or Molotov in, in oh, inside of A side, and yeah, and you just uh, trying to trying to let them do mistake or I, I don't know something like that. But yeah, like as I said, a lot of rounds, <coughs> but everyone need to know those rounds, you know, because uh, we had some problems that some players even read the round. And they're doing something wrong. That's what oh, right. is the most. That's like uh, I feel it's the worst part uh, of my career in the last three or four years. When when someone is reading and he's doing mistake, and after he's doing mistake again, and you don't understand what inside of his head when he's doing this mistake. So yeah. I have to ask you this question because everyone saw it on camera and heard it in the interviews. It sounds like what you're talking about is one of your biggest problems in Counter-Strike because people know that when the round is lost, look at the face cam of Simple. If his teammate fucks up the round or does the smoke, they're going to see it or maybe even hear from it. Might even just hear him, hear him say it in the language across the thing. And then everyone knows in the interview, the interview when you lose is going to be like, some of us in the team aren't quite understanding what's going on. And then everyone knows it. It just means that guy, the guy who did the mistake. Like, <laughs> Isn't this one aspect you've sort of struggled with? Because some people would say, simple, you should be like kinder to them or you should be like a big brother and just, you know, forgive them. Have you struggled to sort of not tell them they do it wrong or, or react and be frustrated? Of course, of course. I'm still working on it all the time. It's it's becoming a bit hard, especially when you lose it. But yeah, I'm just, uh, when someone don't hear or doing this mistake, uh, when you're just reading around and you're still doing something wrong, you just... Uh, I'm just getting a bit mad because uh, I, I don't know how it's how it's possible. How can you read and not do what <laughs> it's wrote, you know? How, yeah, because like, you're an alien. Everyone else like, is just human, <laughs> mate. You know that, right? Like you have instruction to build a fucking house and you're doing everything wrong, you know? Sure. What is the question, though? Let me ask you this. If in the round, Simple read the round and Simple did a mistake, if I'm an RV player... Can I flame simple? Can I go like, what the fuck you do? Like, oh, do it right. Is that, would you accept that? You take it? You, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there was something like it, but not like reading, but saying. And I was thinking about something myself, but it's usually with smokes, you know? Right. But it was really rare. And yeah, I remember uh, Alexei was telling me the same, like on practice, you know? What if I would call you this mistake? I, I, I'm telling you. You can say it, I mean, because I usually call out some really, like, bad mistake. And it's some with uh, communication as well. When I'm trying to tell and ask my teammate something to do and he don't listen to me, it, it, like, it gets me mad, as I said, because uh, I just know <coughs> that in, in this timing, we just need to do it as, as quick as possible. So, yeah. Right, obviously... When you think about why the Navi lineup, that lineup broke up and boom, it was removed from the team. And then you had to start the one with SDY and all that. Obviously, in the bigger picture, the real tragedy is obviously that there's a war and people are dying. But even in Counter-Strike, I'm someone who cares about Counter-Strike history, I think that's a tragedy, what happened to this Navi squad, because we never really know when it would have ended. Like, if people don't know, I think I once ran the numbers, and it was something like you'd won something like 20 series and lost one ever. That one fluke one to Team Liquid, if you remember, with Shocks. That was the only time ever this Navi team on land ever lost a series, right? In that scenario... Bearing in mind, people might know, the war literally broke out the day before, like the quarterfinals of Katowice, where you're at. It'll always be what if, right? We'll always wonder, was, what, what could this team have done? 
Yeah, I mean, it's definitely because of work, because uh, we lost so many days of practice trying to understand how to move uh, players from Russia right. so they don't stay there and all these documents. And there was a lot of problems like uh, of all players. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was before semis. So we qualified from first place from our group. And before semis, like three days before, or four days before it started. And I remember when we were losing, we had no emotions at all. Like, uh, I had no emotions. No one, none of us. Like, it's, you just couldn't it's okay. Care. Yeah, it's okay. It's like, yeah. So I feel like <clears throat> we would win much more. And I don't actually know how we managed to go in PGL uh, Edward Major in final. And actually we're so close uh, to beat phase. But uh, yeah. Everything started when the war started, and uh, there was a lot of hate from community from both sides. Oh, for sure, understandable, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that was hard, but uh, it's good that everyone in a good relationship between each other as the players, even if uh, three of them playing in Cloud Nine and me and Valerchik in Navi. Do you ever wonder though, because I once made a video like this where I tried to explain that even if simple in the period with like all these rotating players was acting very frustrated. It's like I said to people, if you understand his career story though, it must be really difficult because like we're saying, you battle your whole career to not just win, but have a really awesome team that can be the best ever. And essentially in this scenario, like an era might have been taken from this team, right? We'll never know what would happen. It's like, you, it's like if Astralis four months into being awesome had just broken up, we'd have never seen all those great tournaments and the things they did, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like Fnatic, remember, when they broke and they start to stick together and they were never the same. Yes. As you say, though, you got to the final of PGL Antwerp. Sure, like maybe the team wasn't in the best form. What do you think about this final? Because the problem is it was a very close match, but <clears throat> I don't think Simple had his best game. <laughs> right? I remember only one mistake that was really frustrated after this. First of all, this game is so frustrated for Bit because uh, he still, he keep talking about this game. That oh, right. It haunts the him. Saddest, the saddest game in his career. Yeah, this round. The most frustrating for me was uh, when I had chance to finish the first map and there was a clutch. There was a really insane round. It was 15-14. And uh, they start to pick middle, right, and start to push banana. And there was straight bam, 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 bam. And I see I'm alone against ropes. And I was trying to go back on camera to Inferno. And as I understand, and <laughs> Blade understood, uh, ropes was shocked a bit. He didn't know what to do. Right. And I and I saw that I'm showing him on camera. And I decided to go back. And I hear the people start to oh, and. Uh, he just speaking me on timing when I'm just jumping. It's this one's the saddest one. I could just go B because I know that Robs like to play slow. He he was just thinking what to do, and I could just plant and play this one on one. And would, it would be maybe different if we win their map pick six and fourteen. Also, I mean, it's a, it's an obvious question, but I'll ask it. I feel like if you win this match. Look, he obviously had separate reasons we won't get into as to why he also got kicked from the team. But there's a world where maybe the lineup can stay together even in spite of all the situation, right? If you win the major, surely Boomers yes. could have stayed, right? I think so. I think so. <clears throat> but uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> because uh, there was a lot of questions not... There was a lot of questions to him from organization. Yes. And, uh, yeah. not Mostly not from players. By the way, I only have a quick one about like the modern period because it's not as interesting. My question is just what does it be like to play with Alexi B? Because you know how it is. Like a lot of people, he has a lot of haters on the internet for some reason. A lot of people think he's shit or something. Like what do you think about Alexi B? Uh, his individual skill much better than any other IGLs that I played with. Uh, not not counting electronic. Yes. Because he's one of the best rifles. And uh, yeah. And uh, he's really calm. And But his skill is really good. As I said, when we just started practice with him, the way how he won clutches, uh, and for me it was weird because he's uh, staying in those clutches, because we should have other star players who stay in sure. clutches, but he was still winning them, and I was so surprised by this. And um, he liked to 
understand everything from teammate. So he need a lot of uh, he need a lot of information. He needs some initiative from someone to help him to see bigger picture. But he he likes to to tell everyone what to do the same way how Zeus said. But he had much better individual skill. When Zewu first came along, what did you think of him? I think that he he can be a really really good player. The first time when everyone when some of players call him cheater, like when someone said it about drops when he just played FPL. So yeah, and uh, I was of course I was surprised how he's playing that good because. And when he said in interviews that he never play aim bots in DM, he just playing bugs. I yep. was surprised as well. Like, but I could understand him. It's as I said before in our interview that as much as you play, as much uh, you have those situations that will help you in pro games when you play them, like in bugs. Yeah, playing but, properly. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think he's really calm, and that his bonus is like uh, really calm outside in, inside the game. And I feel uh, vitality is a lot of good people that helped him to become better. And sports psychologists as well and all of them. Do you remember before we went online, we were at Blast Premier when they changed the format. You referred to it earlier, the one where you beat Astralis and you beat Vitality and you won the group. And we did an interview. We were You came to the analyst desk and we did an interview. And at the time, right... Last year, no, when I say that I'm better, I'm going to ask you about it though. The year before, Zewa was voted number one player, and I was reading all these interviews, and you were doing your politician shit. You were like, "Yes, you know, I think he deserves to win because he was playing very well, and he, maybe he was a better player, and, you know, the, and the win the tournaments." And I asked you, "Because yeah, I know yeah. you," I'm like, "Come on, you don't actually." Here's the thing: that's like a great you're giving him credit there, but I was like, "You don't actually think he's better than you, though?" No, of course not, but. Uh... How can I say that I, that he is better than me? Like this year, definitely, of course. But I know, <clears throat> I just, <clears throat> I just feel like uh, with with the amount of practice that I can put and uh, the team around me, our team would always be better than Vitality one. I feel so. I mean, right now they're. I feel like they're becoming more decent and decent, sure. especially. With uh, Sphinx and Flame Z, let's see how it's gonna be with Messi. Uh, but I just feel uh, even the team with uh, this team Navi instead of Wonderful, uh, I feel like we have much better understanding of game and individual skill than their whole team. But uh, I don't know. I just need to put some time because I I'm actually tired. And I wanted to do break to do uh, the documents to live in Europe and uh, just to chill. And uh, because of that, I think because of the thoughts that I had, uh, I started to play a bit badly and uh, we changed to internationally. And it's obvious that with systems that he has right now, uh, he will play better and more comfortable. I don't know how much you know about, like, if you follow football or something, but in football, they have a very similar rivalry. It's obviously Messi versus Ronaldo. And yeah, the perception, dude, is quite similar. I don't know if you know this. Like, for example, if you ever read the interviews with Messi, he's a bit like Zebu. He always tries to make it like, oh, I don't really even think about the other guy. Rivals? Like, no, we're just good players. Like, you know, I, I just do my thing, you know. Whereas, like, simple is a bit like more like Ronaldo. Like, Ronaldo's thing is, like, he's really driven. No, no, he wants no. to be number one. He wants to he wants to beat everyone. Is this not, is this not the case? I hope simple more like Messi, because Messi is better. And uh, it's all right. Listen, you, you're going to say actually, yes, but you don't have to know anything about football. Go on. We actually don't know a lot of uh, information about Messi because he he don't speak English sure. at all, and he don't do a lot of interviews. Sure. And uh, he's different person. He's he's family person. You know? Okay. But anyway, the, the point I was making, though, is, is yeah, when, no, you, when yeah. you would hear those comments from Zewu, isn't it sort of like, come on, bro. Can you, part of it sounds like bullshit, doesn't it? Surely he cares about being better than Simple. Surely he thinks he's his rival, right? Surely. But the last one interview, he did like more like Cristiano, you know? <laughs> the last yes. one. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, people compare, but yeah, I love Messi. And I, I follow football every day, to okay. be honest. But didn't you think Zewu was... Do you believe that he really believes that, that he wasn't thinking of you as a rival and he wasn't trying to beat you? You really no, believe that? 
No, I think he was thinking about this. Maybe not at the beginning, but I de- I, ho- I hope he saw that we can be rivals, you know. Maybe he, he don't want to say it in interview to have some... All right. Um, drama or something. Drama, pressure from fans, whatever. But, but like, he should understand this, hopefully. The other thing I want to ask was, I do think by the end of CSGO, a lot of people had their belief that the AWP is too powerful. It's not my belief, but I know a lot of pro players. I mean, the real problem I've always said with the AWP simple is there's only one person on each team uses it. So there's one guy who thinks it's awesome and there's four players that are sort of like, nah, it's bullshit, that gun. And so the problem is pro players are always going to agree the AWP should be nerfed. But the perception was, because the AWP's powerful, whoever's the AWP basically gets to be HLTV number one, for example. And so if people don't know, Nico has never been HLTV number one. But I have always thought, I don't really know how a rifler can play better than Nico. Like... Couldn't Nico be the goat of CSGO? No, no. I don't think so. No? I don't think that he won enough tournaments. Right. That's important to and, you? You have uh, to have the trophies? Yeah, and Nico, when he had number two as a rifle, above him was Cold Zero as a rifle as well. But And both of them used actually second up, I think. Right. I don't remember if Nico used it in 2017. He did, did before, still. I know, yeah. What was the question? <laughs> Couldn't Nico be the goat of CSGO? Oh, there, there are no more CSGO. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, couldn't someone say that that was their opinion? Maybe they thought the AWP was just overpowered, so Nico was the best rifle. Maybe Nico was the best. I don't, I, I don't know actually. But uh, if you remove AWP, no, 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 I would play much better with rifle. Oh, you would still beat him with a rifle, move, right? Okay. The remove AWP. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, Nico so. is insane, but uh, I just know. I'm not, I don't want to disrespect or whatever, no, no. but I just know my power, you know. I just feel like I know more about this game or any other FPS game. Even if I go Warzone right now, I know that I will do a lot of damage. <laughs> Call of Duty, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 because uh, there should be understanding of game. That, that's what every CS player needs to understand. The way how you read them and the way how you put your crosshairs with angles the way how you hear sounds, so your crosshair placement would be better. Some of the people, and still maybe they say, remember uh, about my crosshair placement? placement. Yes. It says shit, but I just I just don't need to always be, at, like, when I'm clearing angles, my crosshair uh, placement already, like... Yes. Uh, ideal. Right behind wall. Yeah, ideal, ideal. But if I know that there is no danger, I'm just thinking, I'm just walking, I'm just watching on radar, and I don't even need to watch anymore yes. because I know the whole information. But if, if I feel the danger, it's uh, I'm, I'm always prepared for this. And Nico's uh, very huge bonus that his crosshair placement is better, much better with pre-fires and yes. angles. And the way how he shoot, I mean, I would never shoot like this because I don't like this play style. I don't know. Maybe it's because of his low sensitivity that he's doing this one taps and, you know, okay. this crispy. Because I have different 3.09 and it's a bit harder to control. And sometimes I feel like you don't need to want up because if you miss, you, the enemy can punish yeah. you, you know. It does simple. It doesn't have to be what other people think. I mean, if 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 I if I strap you to a chair now and I inject you with a truth serum, it makes you mm-hmm. have to say the truth. You can't lie to me. Mm-hmm. If I said to simple, was simple the goat of CS score? Would he answer yes? Yes, of course. Why? What made you the goat? I think uh, <clears throat> I had a really hard way uh, to get those trophies, uh, to get more mature. We had a lot of problems. Uh, I went through the online era, through the war era. Uh, war era. War era is still going, yes. But I just feel like uh, I got a lot of achievements and I was always fighting against best. I was fighting against Cold Zero. I was fighting against Device, against Dico, against Zaivu, and uh, there was only me who was fighting against them in all years. That's what I feel. And I guess Shiro as well. Oh, sure. It's the Gambit lineup when uh, they were destroying yeah. us as Navi. They were doing everything what we did, but much better. Don't know how to explain this. <coughs> and there was so many different fights against one of the best players. And uh, just <laughs> because on, I was with them all the time, I feel like uh, I just des- deserve more to be good than any other in CSGO. 
if I took you in a time machine now and we can quickly go at MLG Columbus before the semi final and tap simple on the shoulder and say, right, on this, uh, like, on the, like, whatever, 21st round on uh, the first map, just all near to the car going out on the B. And so you win that round and you win this map and then maybe you win the major. If Simple, who's that old in Team Liquid, wins the MLG Columbus major, you said before, like, it, it motivated you that you didn't win. Would it change who you are? Would you not be the same player? Would you work less hard? Would you take time off? Would you get more egotistical? What do you think would have happened? I think uh, I would just get more achievements right now. Right. You would I have still been so. driven. Yeah, I remember I was sad that I didn't become... I, my mother was telling this in an interview. <clears throat> so I came back home and I was sad and she asked me... She, t she told me, like, it's okay. One day you'll win major. And I'm, mom, you don't understand. I could become... <laughs> The first player, the youngest player, to right. the major. So yeah, but um, <clears throat> I I feel like uh, I would just get more achievements, maybe on one major more, you know. But uh, we never know. I mean, does that mean then you didn't win enough in your career? You should have won more. I feel I lost uh, uh, a lot uh, major finals. I I think I lost the same amount of major finals like Guardian and like Flamey, and probably like Nico as well. Or he lost two, maybe. Yes, two. I lost three, yeah. So that's the one thing that I don't like, you know. I could have win, as you said. Uh, no, actually, if we... <laughs> if we gonna look with truth, there was SK when we played as stand-ins, and there was Astralis in prime. But still, it's, it can be excuse. I could, I could have win more. What about, were there ever years where you've been battling and doubt comes? You know those thoughts that come to you before you go to sleep? Like, maybe I'll never win the major. Did you ever think it? Yes, of course, of course. There always was the thought. What if I don't win a major? What people would say, would they consider me one of the best players or would they say that I'm a, a choker, you know, something like this. But, of course, winning a major, it's one of the most important in terms of everything, in, in terms of glory and in terms of money. Uh, but still, there is uh, there's really good tournaments like uh, Cologne, like Katowice, like MLG Cologne. MLG Columbus was one of the best that I played with crowd, with everything. And those tournaments, the one who won it, I mean, they did decent job as well. And it's still not finished because there is CS2. I feel... Uh, there's going to be a lot of good years. Maybe one day I'll become IGL when uh, I'll become shit player <laughs> individually, you know. Maybe it's going to be... It, it, I'm always thinking about this, you know. Interesting what's going to be in future. Right, obviously you aren't going to win number one player of this year. But mm -hmm. what I want to know is this. Just privately, when in 2019 and 2020 you heard... See, we was number one. Did you think like should have been me? Um, only in one year. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. When they when SLTV did this MVPs, well, that's actually the funny thing. They did MVPs for European Aramer. Yes. They never add any of CIS, and oh, after right. next year CIS start dominate, and they added, right you know. And uh, that because they thought CIS tournaments weren't as good as European, yeah. I'm assuming, right? Yeah, that was right. I was thinking only about this in 2019, of course, no. In 2020, I feel it was 50 50, but probably maybe they had some better achievements in uh, S tire tournaments, yes. But still, it was the one year I was like, maybe it should have been me, maybe it's like 51 and 49 for him, I don't know, but yeah. So and Pete, I was surprised when they when they gave me second place in 2019 because it should have been device. Right. When you came to uh, 2022, the last year, with all these struggles and difficulties, and you even had a part towards the end of the year where your own game was falling off and the stats were lower, I always said to people, it is pretty crazy that essentially he's had like a down year, but we're gonna he has to be voted number one player, like he's actually the best player. 
This is the question I have. If a fan watches this year, simple, you know what all the, I mean, nowadays the fans are even worse. You know, every fan like, hey, little bro, you think, what do you, hey, you washed, like, what the hell, your shit, like, they're all going to go, ah, simple is washed, he'll never be number one again. If simple comes back and he practices and he has his team around him and he's driven, he's going to be the number one player again. He will, he will, he definitely will. What do you think? Careful. What do you think of CS2? Tell me. It's becoming much better. For past one month, it's become much better. I'm a bit sad that they <clears throat> changed the movement again, all of this stuff, why they didn't do it before, uh, but still. And uh, I feel OP became better. Uh, yeah, it's becoming, as I said, it's like one and a half months ago, if you want to play professional, just wait three months. And I feel we are going to this point and in 2024, this game is going to be much better in terms of uh, everyone says from pro players that Atlanta is better because there is five pin. Right. And there is actually a difference between five and 40 pin. Sure. In game, not like not like in CSGO. Right. So I feel uh, they can make it even better. Just, uh, yeah, just need some good tournaments with good crowds so people will finally attend them. Because I'm tired of these uh, tournaments with no crowd like yes. Abu Dhabi. Or in Pro League. Uh, yeah, Pro League as well. Yeah, Pro League, man. It's Pro League in Malta. Is, it's very hard to play all the time, coming and playing there. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward for much bigger events so people will finally come to the event. Uh, Weavers will grow and the game will grow by itself. Yeah. Yes. When you had um, the team with Russians and Ukrainians in. Obviously, even if we as analysts are thinking, like, who could they recruit? It's always like, right, it has to be someone who speaks Russian or Ukrainian. They've got to be from this region. So it can't be like, you know, Danish player, Swedish player. When you made this international lineup, nobody knows now. Maybe you can play an international lineup for the rest of your career. Like this isn't any disrespect to Alexi B because he's my boy and people know I defend him to the end of the earth. But as soon as you go international, that makes me start thinking of in years in the future, Dude, that means like Simple could play with Nico. He could like, he could have Glaive or Carrigan be his in-game leader. Is this the sort of thing, would you ever want to try and experiment with some of the other players that used to battle where you could have them on your team now one day, right? Yeah, one day, maybe one day. But still, I need to learn a lot in the international team before I can uh, maybe in future try to play with like Nico, as you said. Uh, yeah, it's a bit... It's hard. It's hard at the beginning. And especially it's hard when you just create a team, all new call outs. It's just, it's just like in 2016, that what happened in 2023. Everything is new. And, but, that, but that's interesting as well. It's like a new game that you need to learn. I feel like you actually got sort of like a throwback last year where when you were the GOAT and when Na'Vi won a lot and was dominant, everyone loved you. You had a million fans, everyone, Sasha, oh, you're the best. Oh, oh, he's really changed. He's not toxic anymore. But then when all this stuff happened, like Na'Vi's results go down, teammates coming in and out. You, I mean, people know behind the scenes you had a lot of hard times and you didn't see your mum for months and months and months. She's off there and you're doing a tournament to tournament. To, everyone else gets to go home. There's a lot of stress, right? And so the question I have is this. It looked to me like you almost, people's perception of you was like you went back in time to flip side simple because everyone was flaming you. Everyone was hating on you. Every time you say anything, everyone jumps on you. Was this a hard year to deal with? What was going on? I think the last year was much harder, like uh, mentally. And I feel like people forget any other player uh, places expect the first one. And I'm not going to judge them because... First of all, we are focusing on our life and we're just watching a game and some people don't understand that uh, I don't care. I, I like to read what they write, but I don't care at all because I got so much shit from 2014 and there was much worse years in terms of mentally understanding that uh, some some people write washed or whatever. But yeah, I'm just, uh, I just know that everything will be good when I'll, when I come back. And uh, I'm not frustrated from this year, but as I say, I frustrated more from last year to understand that uh, the team that had a small era on line plus LAN could have continued this era, but we need to move on. If someone was a new fan now and they didn't watch all your career, 
what match would you tell them to go watch? And this is like, yeah, it can be your best. It can be your favorite. What was the match they should see? And this, they'll know who simple is after this match. Oh, <laughs> this is a very hard question. Just to choose one. Ooh. Should be some Mirage game for sure. Or Nuke. It should be a Navi lineup from 2021, 2022. Or maybe if it's not my game, maybe some interesting game. Oh, if it's just interesting game, I would recommend you to watch no matter what year, no matter. Just watch uh, uh, Face Clan against Fnatic, Katowice. I mean you, not someone else. I mean your career. Ah, my career. Okay. Yeah, what's your best game? <laughs> not what's a great uh, game to watch. I think the best game, I remember Navi versus Australia's Katowice 2020. It was just oh, destroying right. them. I remember when Boomich came, he said, I want uh, Australia's never beat us. And that's actually okay. happened at LAN. At, okay, it's, that's it's, cool. And it feels like uh, maybe at some point, because of our wins against them, we destroyed their team. Like some players left. And, yeah. Yeah. So 2020, <coughs> Katowice, Navi against Australia's quarterfinal. I guess, yeah. At the end of this interview, Simple, I have to ask you one more question. Now, I saved it till the end because this interview is about you. This is an interview. But it'd be a bit weird if we do an interview and I don't ask this question. So last year, you told me online that I'm a mm -hmm. piece of shit and that when you retire, you will expose me. Not me, who has all the dossier on you, knows everything about what you've done. You're going to expose me and you know secret shit about me. So tell you what, mate, here's, there's the flaw. What, why am I a piece of shit? What are you going to expose about me, mate? Uh, yeah, I apologize in front of you for a piece of shit, but you definitely was wrong about Colin. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, the way how he was destroying me, it's like, uh, I cannot... Tell that he's uh, <laughs> overrated. Your sure. word, the most overrated. You sure. the most overrated. I agree with it. Yeah. The guy who changed uh, Brazilian scene and won so many tournaments and beat my ass so many times. But uh, expose you, it's no, it was just something random that I wrote at the end that I will expose you. So, yeah. Because if people don't know, like, I thought we were friends before that, mate. Like, we already had good conversations in real life. If people don't know, you're more like this in real life. You're very respectful. You're not like flaming everyone, right? Yeah, of course. Sometimes we're friends, sometimes we're enemies. Okay. Okay, I see how it is. <laughs> okay. At the end of this interview, Simple, do you have a final message? Is there someone you'd like to say hello to or thank? Uh, yeah, I just want to tell everyone that soon uh, I'll create a project that's going to change a lot of CS players' minds in terms of understanding the game and playing better. So hopefully you'll know about this soon and uh, hopefully it will help you to become better. And thank you for inviting and uh, of course, you invited me a few months ago. No time, just like, let's do it. And uh, thank you everyone who will watch this and hopefully everything will be great. Jakuyu. Tak, tak, okay. Jakuyu. Thank you. When I make content, it isn't just me, the mic, and a guest or a topic. It's also me with the support of my whole crew. Who's that, you might ask? The Skrilluminati, that's who. They include Frisky, Matt Pognaccio Racula, Ahmed Hadju, Tosh, Tobias Bernasconi, Jensen Gore, Animosity, Toucan, and you know it if you've heard it before, but if you haven't, a special thanks goes out to my main man, Jerky's Minion. Well, if you want to know upcoming topics and guests I'm going to have on my channel, maybe you want to ask me a question to answer in an AMA in video fashion. Do you want to hear one of those long discussions and actually be part of it and be able to ask me questions? Want to find out who I'm going to interview next? If any of these perks or more appeal to you, put your money where your mouth is. Join the Skrilluminati today via the Patreon link in the description box below.